Doctors, I'm going to address this question to both of you. There have to be some safety issues with the mangosteen. The first thing I'd like to say, Abby, is that one of the benefits of traditional medicine, medicine that has been used by cultures in various parts around the world, is that they use an herb or a fruit for century upon century, and it's passed down from family to family, that from record to record shows which fruits or herbs are helpful, which herbs or fruits are toxic or have harmful effects, and that there is not one documented case in any research that I've been able to uncover that demonstrates there's any type of uh, adverse or toxic property to the mangosteen fruit, the pericarpet seeds. I, I slipped on one on a, on a sidewalk <laughs> when I was in New Zealand, and that's about the closest I've come to seeing damage. Now, people can have allergic reactions to this fruit just like they can to any other kind of fruit, but in the reported reactions, they've been restricted to cutaneous, cutaneous uh, manifestations, nothing that is life-threatening. So it's not that people cannot have adverse reactions, but they aren't life-threatening. They, they don't fall into the same category as drugs do. And, you know, you just have to wonder, why would you ever use a drug which has the potential for disaster when a mangosteen or a fruit or some other edible element that is in nature could possibly give you the same kind of an effect? That's the question I ask over and over. Right. And my dad used to tell me when I was a little kid growing up to trust in God but tie up your camels. And so if you really want to make sure that things are safe, what, I did, what we did is direct two studies that were toxicity studies done with laboratory rats, megadosing the mangosteen fruit in different concentrations to uh, a group of rats over a month. And uh, in macroscopic in microscopic examination of the tissues of the rats, there was nothing that showed any type of pathological uh, manifestation. The only change in behavior that was noted was that the rats were running out and sharing their mangosteen with uh, friends. <laughs> <laughs> Which brings me to the next question. I think everybody's thinking of stockpiling the mangosteen right now. Is there a limit to how much we should be taking? Well, you know, there, with the rat studies, there were no toxic limits. Uh, when you do studies like this, you try and establish some dose at which the animal or the person that you're using with is going to have adverse effects. We didn't ever find that toxic level. So there is no toxic level. However, in minimum dosages, when someone is looking for a therapeutic effect, something's gone wrong with them, and they're trying to get that in some way reversed through the assistance of the mangosteen, I recommend that because it has a half-life of four to six hours in the human body, in other words, it remains in the circulation for about four to six hours before half of it is gone, that it should be dosed three times a day. Now, that's uncomfortable to have to take something three times a day, but that's the fact. And you would start with at least one ounce per dose, 30 ml for those who may be in a different system than we have here. And you could go up from that. There is no upper limit. More may be better. It in fact appears to be that way in very serious conditions such as cancer and uh, major ailments. People take much more than one ounce three times a day. However, when you're looking for the benefits of prevention, a single ounce a day seems to be all that you need. Well, everybody hates to hear that C word, the cancer word. It certainly is a, a terrifying description. Nobody wants to ever hear it, Dr. Templeman, but I know that you believe that the mangosteen can really help in that direction, certainly with tumors. Well, in fact, what I wrote in the mangosteen, the X factor, was that it was an anti-tumor effect. And here again, we have to go back to the idea that we're working in petri dishes with cultures of human cancer cells. So taking human cancer cells from breast, from lung, from liver, uh, leukemia, which is of course a blood type of cancer, and I know that there is a research project going on right now with ovarian cancer. Using these cancer cultures, we have incubated them with the xanthones from the mangosteen, and in no instance has there ever been a failure. In other words, the mangosteen has either killed or it has inhibited the growth of all of the cancer cells to which it has been exposed. And in fact, in 
Taiwan at the university uh, that uh, studies Chinese medicine and compares it to Occidental medicine, there was a comparison done with regard to stomach cancer, breast cancer, and primary liver cancer. And they compared one of the xanthones from the mangosteen, a substance called Garcinone E, to six cancer chemotherapy drugs which are standardly used today. And it outperformed five of them. Now, that may not impress a lot of people because it's in a petri dish, but I'll, I'll tell you it impressed me and I think it impressed the cancer cells. So I, I really do believe that there is reason to be optimistic about this in the use of uh, cancer therapy. However, I would never recommend that anyone stop their standard cancer therapy, whether they're uh, receiving chemotherapy or whether they're having radiation or any other type of cancer therapy, in favor of this. I would suggest that it be added to it and that when some uh, outcome comes, who cares who got the credit? But I have seen remarkable things happen with regard to cancer when folks have used the mangosteen as well as everything else at their disposal. Doctor, I think you have everybody's attention now. Yeah, you mentioned that it was that it was a scary word, the C word, the cancer word. I believe the reason why it's so scary is that you could ask any physician and find an oncologist that's with you for a living and ask, what is the cure to cancer? There is none. And there is none. And I know oncologists do the best job they can with, with the drugs that they have, but there is still to this day no cure for cancer and there is and there is comparing the number of mortality, the mortality the rate. The percentage mortality. Yeah, percentage mortality rate 30 years ago to 2004, it's about the same. And we're talking about the four big killers. We're talking about colon cancer, lung cancer, prostate cancer, and breast cancer. And yet you look at something like an herb, what else can there be in nature that can help? And that's why I believe that even though these are done in a petri dish, these studies that Dr. Templeman mentioned have all come out in the past couple of years, published in peer-reviewed journals, and that there is some there are anti-tumor properties to this, and uh, there's still a lot of study to be done, a lot of promise in this fruit. You certainly have a lot of people's attention right now, Dr. Morton. I have to ask you: Can one fruit just be a cure-all? No, Abby. I don't believe any fruit or herb or drug can be considered a cure-all. There's no such thing as a silver bullet when it comes to medicine. But in saying that, the mangosteen fruit has been used for numerous types of health conditions uh, in Southeast Asia and centuries can't be, centuries of experience and use for health conditions cannot be wrong. Plus, I like what Dr. Templeman said and that is science is now just catching up with what people have already known. So for the past few years, I keep collecting journal article upon journal article that has demonstrated uh, and has really demonstrated how the mangosteen fruit can work in inflammation in Billy's case or as an antibacterial agent or an antiviral agent or an antioxidant agent. And so even though I don't believe science has all of the answers, the one thing science can do is to help provide evidence about why a, in this case, the mangosteen fruit has been used and is continued to be used as an anti-inflammatory or an antibacterial agent. And science is showing that, yes, it does do that, and this is how the mangosteen is doing that. So even though it's no, there's no such thing as a cure-all, there's a lot to back up the mangosteen fruit in the properties that it does have. It has many, many implica yeah. uh, applications. Mm -hmm. Well, could you name three or four of the most important beneficial aspects of the mangosteen? Uh, some of the papers have demonstrated uh, antibacterial properties in, in helping to combat, and then I should mention this too, Abby, these are done in, in vitro in a petri dish uh, for uh, uh, H. pylori, salmonella, um, Staphylococcus, uh, Staphylococcus yeah. uh, Staph aureus, uh, and even up to the mycobacterium bacteria, which is TB. And in vitro has been demonstrated that the xanthones from the pericarp of the mangosteen fruit have been able to kill bacteria completely within a petri dish. And that's very important in dealing with bacteria because if you have any of the bacteria that survive, you now have bacteria that can then be res uh, get a resistance to whatever agent you're using to kill them. And the mangosteen xanthones have killed them completely. Uh, other properties have demonstrated, as I mentioned before, antioxidants are extremely potent in dealing in preventative medicine, which is something that Western medicine does not really deal with that well. How can you prevent health problems like atherosclerosis? And antioxidants have been demonstrated to be very good in combating or preventing atherosclerosis. Mangosteen's fantastic for that. A science article that came out of 
of Australia a few years back demonstrated that in vitro using human blood cell lines. Um, and then I'd say the big one is anti-inflammatory. As Dr. Templeman had mentioned, the xanthones from the mangosteen pericarpid have been demonstrated to stop inflammation in, in animal models and in vitro models, and that has been going over for the past three decades, research and, continually doing that. And the xanthones have been compared to the medicines that I can write prescriptions mm -hmm. for. And literally, uh, I don't think there's a medicine that I can write a prescription for as an anti-inflammatory that would be more potent than the mangosteen xanthones. Well, Dr. Templeman, how can it also help, because I believe it can, patients who suffer from arthritis? Well, David has talked a little bit about the anti-inflammatory effect of this. And, and arthritis in its beginning stages is certainly heavily uh, based upon inflammation not only arthritis but many other diseases and when arthritis actually takes uh, control of a joint and, and if we were talking about a rheumatoid arthritis that's where the body has turned against the material of the joint the immune system of the body has actually mistakenly believed that the material of the joint is foreign tissue and so it attacks it and it destroys it and that is a pure inflammatory process so that when you give uh, the mangosteen to people who have these problems you get wonderful results. I had a, a golfer, a fellow who had uh, actually earned his living by being a golfer, a golf pro and he had contracted a particularly aggressive form of rheumatoid arthritis, so much so that in a matter of months he was bedbound with a number of very hot, red and inflamed and painful joints that standard medication was not able to help at all. He eventually got to the point where he was using a very powerful drug that is sometimes used as a chemotherapy agent called methotrexate. But in fact, it's so toxic, it can only be used for a short period of time in any individual patient. Now, the methotrexate allowed him to get up and to walk around, and he could, in fact, golf a little. But he knew that he was coming to a time when the methotrexate could no longer be prescribed to him, and he was desperate. I proposed the use of mangosteen, and I was a little bit hesitant because we were putting it up against methotrexate. But interestingly enough, when he dovetailed his use of, me use of methotrexate with the mangosteen preparation, in a matter of three to four weeks, he was able to reduce his dosage and eventually stop the methotrexate, get out and be more pain-free than he ever had with any medication. So once again, in an arthritic case, and this is probably the most striking one, but I've heard of many stories since and had other patients, the mangosteen works better than many medications. Now, you know, doctor, some cynics would say, well, that's kind of like the placebo effect. Well, it is like the placebo effect, but as Dr. Morton was explaining, we have a number of animal studies, particularly when we're examining inflammation. And the placebo effect is very difficult to sort out from an animal study because it isn't the same as human communication, and particularly when you're talking about laboratory rats or guinea pigs. So while there is a possibility of placebo, but I'd point out that a placebo cure is a cure. So we don't need to necessarily fine, uh, you know, go with a fine-tooth comb through every cure. A cure is a cure. And if it's from placebo, I'm not terribly worried as long as the patient is better. But this outstrips placebo. Placebo can be a maximum of 30%. This literally outstrips placebo. Many more people get better with this than could be explained with placebo. And I, I'd like to add to that too, Abby, is that even though usually science would go in an in vitro study in a petri dish and then from that to an animal model in an in vivo study and then to a human model, that's generally the, the progression that goes with, uh, with studying an herb or a medicine. Uh, you can't take a guinea pig and have a guinea pig pretend that the inflammation goes away it just goes away. So even though you can't say because it worked in a guinea pig, it's going to work exactly the same way in a human being, if the inflammation goes away in a guinea pig or a rat, they didn't pretend it or fake it. It happened. Good. And so that happens even though you can't say placebo effect happened in an animal. Point well taken.